Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Review and Preview Sports. My name is Noah Dyber, one of the newest uh, hosts on Review and Preview. Going to be starting a hockey podcast soon, myself and my buddy Garth Michael Patrick. Excited to join the crew, but before we get right into my first video here today, just want to give a quick shout out. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Review and Preview Sports, as well as all our social media panels Facebook at Review and Preview Sports, Instagram at Review and Preview. Twitter at Review Preview One. We're on Anchor as well, anchor.fm slash Review and Preview. And like I mentioned, we are on YouTube at Review and Preview Sports and TikTok at Review and Preview. Now, my first ever video, one very close to my heart as a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Um, we're going to be talking about a massive re signing they made the night before free agency opened, which was July 12th. It opened on July 13th, free agency did. Evgeny Malkin. Resigns with the Penguins, four-year, $24.4 million contract extension, $6.1 million AAV. Obviously, Malkin, a legend of the franchise. He is now 35 years old. He turns 36 very soon, I believe. Um, but some thoughts on this contract extension as I put up the Penguins cap situation here. Um, they are currently... Roughly 200 k in the hole, but basically they're right around the salary cap now. And the main thing for them is that they've re-signed pretty much every key player in their roster. Crosby's still on an absolute steal of a contract at $8.7 million for the next three years. Like I said, they just re-signed Malkin. And I think with re-signing guys like Malkin, and we'll get into a tangle a bit later, it's one of those moves that Penguins fans either absolutely love or they absolutely hate. And... <sighs> It's really tough because there's a sentimental side of it. These are all Crosby, Malkin, and Latang. They're all legends of our franchise. They've contributed to multiple Stanley Cups, every one of them. All of them should have their jersey numbers retired and go into our rafters. But you also have to consider the financial and age side of it. Malkin is 35. Um, if I look over his age, it says his birthday is July 31st. So in 17 days, he's going to be 36. This is a four-year contract. It's going to take him till he's 39. If we look at Tanks real quick down here, he also got $6.1 million, um, but for six years. He's 35 as well. That contract's going to take him till he's 41. And we look at the state of the Penguins. They have not gotten out of the first round in four years. You're not even talking, oh, they haven't won a Stanley Cup in four years. They haven't won a playoff series in four years. They blew the series to the Rangers this year. I'm sorry to all my Rangers fans, like my good buddy Tom Scavetta. Um, they just absolutely choked that series. Fair credit to the Rangers. You know, they showed up in the last three games. We did not. The year before that, they lost a very winnable series, I thought, against the Islanders. They had a 2-1 series lead in that one. Then they lost three straight. The year before that, they lost in a playoff round to the Montreal Canadiens, a series I also think they had no business losing. And the year before that, okay, they got swept by the Islanders. They just... They just never showed up for that series. So, you know, that was just probably one of the worst moments of the Crosby and Malkin era. But when we look at Malkin, he's a very good player, and I'm going to put up his stats real quick in a second. But before I do that, you know, like I said, just looking at the cap, the Penguins are actually pretty good for this year. They got most of their guys locked down. Kaspari Kapanen is an RFA, which they can tender him and get some draft picks for him. I don't think he's a major loss. I think he's a guy, he's very fast but he has no end product in this game. So if they let him go, it's not a big deal. But they still have Crosby. They re-signed Malkin to the tank, like I said. Gensel's still here for two more years on six man. He's going to want to get paid. They have to keep an eye on that as well. They cannot lose him. He's their most important player, I think, because he's very good, but he still has some youth to him at only 27 years old. Zucker is a UFA next year, which if he goes, I'm not a fan of Zucker. I honestly want hope he left in the expansion draft to Seattle last year. It didn't happen. They re-signed Brian Rust and Ricard to Raquel to six-year contracts at well over $5 million AAV, um, which I like Brian Rust. I like Ricard Raquel, although I wish we didn't have to give up a second-round pick for him. But to give them six-year contracts, you're taking them until they're 36 and 35, respectively. I'm just not a fan of these long-term contract extensions the Penguins are doing. Jeff Carter, he's just a depth guy. He has two more years left. And then just the rest of these forwards here, just basically, you know, bottom six guys slash depth guys. On the defensive side, I already mentioned Latang. I did not want to re-sign Latang. Honestly, even though I didn't really want to re-sign Malkin, if I had to choose one of them to keep, it was Malkin every day. 
Latang is great offensively. He had 68 points in 78 games last year. But what he's not good at, he's not good at defense, and he turns the puck over a lot. In that Rangers playoff series, he had three times more giveaways than takeaways. Now, I understand the nature of being a defenseman. You're going to give it away typically more than you take it away because it's just, you know, you're responsible for breakout passes out of the zone, and sometimes they're going to get intercepted. I mean, it happens. But the guy, he's just not good defensively, man. There's a lot of defensive breakdowns. Now, I will say he does not have a good defensive partner. But he makes a fair a fair share of mistakes as well. And like I said, he's no spring chicken. And he has a no movement clause as well on this contract that takes until he's 41. So I personally wanted to let Latang go. I was 50-50 on Malkin. You know, if they wanted to keep him, okay. As long as they didn't overpay, which for a player of his talent, $6 million for Malkin isn't too bad. Honestly, both of these contracts are better than I thought they would be. It's mainly the length. Taking these guys until 39 and 41. That I'm not a fan of. Michael Madsen, I do not like that guy. I mean, he had a terrible own goal against the Rangers in that game seven. I just don't think he's very good. And we got him for four more years at almost five million. Not great. Marino as well has a not great contract. I mean, he's had some moments where he's looked very good, but I think he's just very inconsistent. The rest of these guys, Duma and Pedersen, we just signed Jan Ruta from the Lightning. So interested to see how he does. But Ruido and Freeman. I mean, if, if they let any of these guys go, like when Doom one's up next year, I'd be perfectly fine if they let him go. Um, and then on the goaltending side, Tristan Jari and Casey DeSmith. Luckily, we did not resign Louis Domingue. He went to the New York Rangers, which kind of makes sense because, you know, I'm convinced he was a double agent in that series with how terribly he played. But it is what it is. So we have questions on the goaltending side as well. But going back to Malkin real quick, and I'm going to remove this screen real quick here. I want to put up some of his stats and talk about him more specifically, the player that he is. Um, now, to me, Malkin, as I put up his, his statistics here real quick, Malkin is a guy that has always been offensively focused. He's never a guy that's going to be you know up there for, for Selkie awards or whatever you want to talk about for good defensive forwards. He's a guy that's always scored. I mean, in his career, 1,146 points in 981 games, 442 goals, 702 assists, plus 59. He is deadly on the power play. He is not a good faceoff guy. Like I said, he's not really about defense. He has always been about scoring. I mean, the season in 2011-12, which I'll highlight here real quick. Let me just get rid of these real quick. This season right here that I've highlighted, 109 points in 75 games, 50 goals, 59 assists. That is what Malkin could do. That was a season Crosby was out most year. He only played like 20 games or whatever because of an injury. And he won the Hart Trophy that year, which is the equivalent of an MVP award uh, for any of the other North American leagues. He's a fantastic player. Um, he's always been the number two center in his career behind Crosby. But in his prime, Malkin could have been the number one center on 90 plus percent of teams easily. Now, I mean, if we go back to this season, he had 42 points in 41 games because, unfortunately, he suffered from injuries as well, but Crosby was also out for a long time. So, I mean, he was still point per game, minus 10, which is mostly a team stat, but like I said, he's not a defensive first guy. So, I mean, he doesn't win faceoffs. He won 43% of them this year. He is an offensive and power play killer, but if we go to his miscellaneous stats, I just want to point out something real here. You'll see this category here that says point shares. You have offensive point shares, defensive point shares, and then your total point shares. Think of this like war, what war is for baseball, wins above replacement, trying to calculate how valuable a player is. And in this case, point shares is basically, okay, how many goals are you contributing to over your career? Um, an estimate of the number of points contributed by a player. And if you look at defensive point shares, uh, you'll see the past four years, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 1.5, 0.4. .5, you add those together, 2.7 defensive point shares in the past four years. For comparison, Patrice Bergeron, who's one of the best defensive centers in the game, had 2.6 defensive point shares last year by himself. So in the past four years, Malkin has contributed as, as many, roughly, defensive point shares as the best defensive center can do in one year. So like I said, he's not a defensive guy. But he's a killer offensively, 13.4 offensive point shares in 2011-2012, that season where he did win the MVP. Multiple seasons, you have four seasons where he has over 10, which is phenomenal production. And he has 137.1 point shares overall. 
Now, he's not an elite guy anymore. I mean, he's never been good defensively, like I said. He's not good at face-offs. But he's still point per game when he stays healthy. Now, the thing, like I said, is taking a guy on a contract until he's 39 years old. And to me, for a team that has not won a postseason series in four years, I personally wanted us to go in a rebuild. I did not want them to keep a tank for sure. Thought they should probably let Malkin go. And, you know, I hate to say it, but I thought they should seriously consider trading Sidney Crosby because that's a guy that can get you massive value back. Instead, Ron Hextall, the new GM of the Penguins who came in a year or two back, has decided we'll keep the old guard around and, and see if we can make another run. And, look, I hope I'm wrong. Me, personally, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, the past four years, how we've been embarrassed. But, you know, they're going for it. I think they wanted both of these guys to retire here, which, while I do get from a sentimental standpoint, I mean, for their careers, I love both these players. I just don't know if it's going to work out. And the contracts, I think, the, in the last few years, especially with Latang, because it's six years instead of four, I think are going to be problematic for the Penguins. But if the salary cap does skyrocket in the next couple of years as escrow goes down, players getting more money in their pockets, maybe it'll become more manageable. We'll see what happens. Hopefully the Penguins hold on their first on picks like they did this year. They took Owen Pickering, a six foot four defenseman. So I'm interested to see what he does. But, you know, like I said, we'll see what happens with these guys. Once again, um, make sure to check out all of our social media at Review and Preview Sports on Facebook, Instagram at Review and Preview, Twitter at Review Preview One. We're on Anchor as well, our little uh, podcast website, anchor.fm slash Review and Preview, on YouTube at Review and Preview Sports, and TikTok at Review and Preview. From all the guys at Review and Preview, my name has been Noah Dibler. Go Penguins. Uh, Malkin and Latang and everyone pretty much coming back. We'll see what they can do. Hopefully they can improve from the last few years. Until the next time, everyone have a great day. Enjoy all your sports teams, you know, whatever's going on for you guys. And I'll see you next time very soon for another NHL free agency video. Thanks for watching.